Welcome to the new Blackmagic Video Assist 12G HDR 7 inch. So the Blackmagic Video Assist 12G um, includes a number of new functions that the original Video Assist didn't have. What we wanted to do was start to look at how we could evolve that product even further to work with today's workflows and also to be able to deliver the highest qu possible quality. This version that I'm showing you over my right shoulder is actually using a brand new screen, which is a HDR based screen um, capable of delivering 2500 nits, um, also DCI 100%, um, a P3. Um, the actual um, form factor of this is very similar to the previous one, but there are a couple of fundamental differences in that now we actually have new connectivity that includes USB-C, so that as well as recording upon UHC2 cards, SD cards, you can also record directly to a USB-C drive. So Blackmagic RAW is, is, a, is a format that we've been talking about for around about 12 months now. And 12 months ago, one of the things that we discussed was trying to implement that and work with other manufacturers in the market to be able to have Blackmagic RAW available to everybody. Now we've spent some significant time with camera manufacturers and significant time with other software vendors. And one of the things that we've worked tirelessly to do is to try and encourage um, people who are using non-Blackmagic cameras to use Blackmagic RAW but previously this wasn't available. With the Video Assist product, what we're able to do is take raw sensor data from this Canon C300 and also from the Panasonic um, EVA 1 to be able to take via the SDI into that Video Assist and record in our Blackmagic RAW format. So now not only can you record Blackmagic RAW from a Blackmagic camera on board a Blackmagic camera, but you can also record Blackmagic RAW on an external recording device from a different camera manufacturer's camera as well. So we've been working over the last few months to implement Blackmagic RAW into the video assist, reading that information from two particular cameras. The first one is the Panasonic EVA 1, and the second one is the Canon C300. Those two cameras are allowing us to take the data directly from that sensor into the Blackmagic Video Assist 12G. And, then, and effectively, using that raw information from that sensor, we are able to generate those Blackmagic raw files. I mean, our aim is to try and cover as many cameras as possible, working with as many different manufacturers as possible. But as you may understand, it's obviously going to take us some time to actually get across a broad section of those different camera types. So in terms of the video connectivity, we have SDI connections, which are obviously 12 gig SDI, as well as HDMI. We've also got on there as well um, mini XLR connections so that if you want to use balanced XLR audio, you're going to get great quality audio through that. Now, as I mentioned before, in terms of the recording media, you also have two slots on there for UHC2 SD cards. And then on the base of the unit, there is a USB-C connection, which allows you to record directly to a USB-C drive. You can see on the front of the unit there are actually three different um, menus or three different slots. If I remove this and you look down, it says no card because there's no card currently in slots one or two. If I had cards in there, it would obviously tell me the duration of time that remains on each of those cards. Slot three would actually represent what the USB-C drive would be. So again, one of the great benefits of USB-C is that there are, um, there are large scale USB-C drives that go up to a terabyte and beyond that, they would allow us to record greater length footage across those onto that USB-C drive. One of the great benefits of Blackmagic RAW is that we're reading effectively RAW sensor data from the sensor of the camera. In the case of the EVA 1, that is able to deliver 5.7K directly from that sensor, which means that we are able to capture all that information into a Blackmagic RAW file. So, in effect, whatever that sensor can deliver to us, we are able to read that. Now, this is something that's in development at the moment, and when we are able to release this out, you know, our hope is that we can obviously um, show examples of that and how that we are achieving it. But right now, I mean, this is very much a preview at the show and something that you know, we're, we're talking about because we believe that there's a great need in that market for these other cameras to actually have Blackmagic RAW implemented in some shape or form. Blackmagic RAW is, is not only being used as a camera format, but obviously you then have to look at the entire workflow. And up until recent times, the only real NLE color correction system 
um, that was able to really work with Blackmagic Raw was in fact actually DaVinci Resolve, which is our own, which is our own software product. Now what we have been doing is working with another, a number of other software vendors um, and I think there's around about 12 or so that have implemented Blackmagic Raw now within their applications. But the key ones for us were NLEs and what we are now doing is as part of the actual Raw, um, RAW plugin, um, when you actually unpack that, you have the ability now to load in a Premiere Pro plugin, you're also able to load in an Avid plugin as well. So now Blackmagic Raw is available to be read into both of those two applications and to be edited within those applications. Now it's worth mentioning at this point that um, Blackmagic Raw um, optimizes both CPU and GPU within the, within the DaVinci Resolve software. Now currently within Media Composer and Premiere, it is CPU only, but obviously we're gonna work with those manufacturers to see if we can actually also implement GPUs as well. So the main differences to the Video Assist 7-inch and 5-inch 12G models is not just down to the size and, and, um, and, the, and the actual look and feel of the unit. Um, on, on the surface, they, they are very, very similar in terms of the capability. But one of the main differences, obviously, is, is the fact that you've only got a single SD slot on the 5-inch, on the whereas you've got two SD slots on the larger version. You also have XLR connectivity on the 7-inch as well. Um, but apart from that, what you're looking at is two very, very similar units, both delivering a very high quality image, both of them recording exactly the same formats, both of them using exactly the same battery types. So really what you've got to decide is, is, is really, first of all, whether or not you need the larger unit or you're looking to go more run and gun, a smaller style unit to attach to a smaller form factor camera. Um, and then the second part really you have to decide is whether or not you're going to want that additional SD slot, and whether or not you're going to want that extra professional audio connectivity. I think that the assumption initially is that because you've got a large fan in there, it's going to become noisy. But in fact, what we've done is, as part of the redesign is not just look at the, the cooling through the fan, but the actual cooling through the entire unit. So for those people that actually see one of our older video assists and the new video assists side by side, you'll see that there are some material differences in terms of the actual um, outer casing of the unit. You'll also notice that the, the new unit is slightly deeper, and that's because what we're looking to do is create more ventilation within the unit. The fan that's in the back should give off a minimal noise, but even when you're working with an incredibly intense heated environment. So I think for most people that are familiar with our video assist of today, what you'll notice is there'll be a significant benefit in terms of reduced fan noise with this actual new model. These are scheduled for release in October. The five inch unit runs at 725 euros and the seven inch unit is just under 900 euros at 895.